Hey guys, it's Brad from Exus Motorworks and welcome back to my shop. Sorry, in the last episode with, uh, we were working on our little project here. Still looking for a name for this guy. Somebody threw around Warthog and bits and pieces. But uh, anyway, still, still trying to come up with a name for that. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in to actually where everything ended up laying out. I don't think I actually showed that in the last video. And that's going to lead us to the next thing, which is basically I need hoops. This chassis is strong, but it will actually have frame flex right now because there is no triangulization. Uh, it's just kind of a straight ladder frame at this point. So let me go ahead and give you a really good look at the frame itself. So let's take a little closer look at this frame now that it's basically set up. Um, it obviously needs a lot of structural support still. I need some gussets. I need some hoops to kind of tie everything in, like I was saying. But it's everything is living where it should uh, in relationship to the actual body. Now you notice right here, the original frame was, ex was right around there. That actually got cut back to here. And I put this bar in here, this two by four. And that actually is right where the firewall is gonna live. And you can see, barely see, it's kind of an outline, but that's where the B pillar is on this car. So the hoop is gonna travel up along the edge of that two by four. So there'll be kind of like a, a triangulation in the back here with the uh, two by four and the hoop. And then the front, uh, I actually did add this little kick plate right in here, or this, this two by four, which kicks, kicks the corner, which allows for the tire to clear. And right there, I actually lined that up to the edge of the door. So now we don't have to worry about uh, trying to make sure the, the tire actually clears or cut the door or anything like that. Everything is basically clearance wise, um, we're good. The thing I kind of point out is if you notice right there, that actually is resting on the door sill and that one's not. And the reason for that is I've already started trying to jack this car up a little bit in the back just to get tire clearance. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But what I want to do kind of show you next is uh, the seating position. So in the last video, I alluded to using the Mazda Miata floor pan. I don't think that's going to work after all. And I actually had some stuff laying around the shop here. So let me go grab it. So keeping with the theme of this car, which is basically recycle anything I've got in the shop, I have this aluminum plate. Now this was a diamond plate. I also have some regular aluminum plate. So I'm not actually gonna use this particular piece of aluminum plate. These were actually just cut up and laying around, but they actually are gonna allow me to kind of put the seats in here, figure out where that needs to live as far as the front to back and the side to side and all that kind of lovely stuff. Make sure everything is still on track to actually fitting. So let's go ahead and grab the seats and put them in here and see what everything's looking like. So they clear, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if that was where they need to live or not. Let me hop up in here and take a look. Let's see what's got going on. Got good clearance on my headroom. The feeding position isn't bad. I got enough room here. Driving position's good. Now, <laughs> there is a slight problem. The, uh, the shifter's gonna be close. I'm gonna have to figure that out. We, 
We don't have any room to go over any more. That, that would be kind of in the way uh, of the actual hitting. Matter of fact, that still might be a problem. I really need to get this B-pillar figured out for the hoop because that's going to be basically resting right up against it. Um, other than that, I think this is actually pretty doggone good. I'm, I'm getting pretty lucky here. So I, I like the way I'm sitting. This is an easy position to drive. Got plenty of leg room. Shifting is the only question. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. The seats are about two inches apart. Um, so it's going to be a little tight with that. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue on then. So we've got the seats in there. Uh, we need to figure out basically the height. So I was talking about earlier in the video uh, about how I've raised up the back and actually kind of gives it a rake and that looks pretty cool. But I did that because if this was lower then the actual hump or the actual curvature coming across this is going to look kind of weird in my opinion. Um, now some people have suggested not running fenders and that's an option. Um, I actually kind of like the way that looks. However, I want to try to make this thing a daily driver. And to make it a daily driver, if you really need fenders, because if you've ever driven one of these types of cars in the rain, you've got water slinging up and mud, and it's just a mess. So I do need fenders on this thing, but I also need the fenders to clear. So this is about four inches. You can see here, that's the ground clearance. The frame actually is four inches of ground clearance. So I need four inches of upward tire travel. Um, I can technically get away with a little bit less, but not much. So that means, that's how high this rear fender has to be. And as you can see, that kind of lines up with the uh, window sill here. So normally a car doesn't come straight out. You know, it kind of comes at a profile similar to this 911 fender. So we got this uh, leftover 911 fender was uh, basically a uh, it's heavier than what it needs to be. So it was original, basically a mock-up piece. So we can use this, and I actually uh, will put this on the other side of the car to show you. But what that's going to allow us to do is also create an air inlet right here in the back. So we're not going to actually have the radiator front like they do on the 1000s and stuff on the Fiat. I actually don't like the way that looks. It kind of sticks out in the front. So I'm actually going to have this be an opening here, and the radiator will live actually in the very, very back. The side will actually have probably an intercooler for the supercharger. Remember, this thing is going to be supercharged, so we need to deal with that too. But uh, let's take a look at uh, how this is going to kind of look on the other side of the car. Again, we need four inches of clearance here. And we also need four inches of clearance here. So you can see that's already above the, the uh, actual hood. So that might have a, a hump. I'm not exactly sure how I want to do that. Or I can, again, raise this car up just a little bit. You're not going to notice this. This is actually the uh, sill down here. And if I do this, the, the, what I'm talking about with the opening in the back, that's going to kind of come out anyway. So having this a little thicker down here than the factory, that's OK. Um, but I, gotta, I definitely have to address it and I have to address that before I actually design the hoops because if this is going to go up, then the hoops need to be longer because I obviously don't want the hoops in the middle of my way. So what I need to do right now is I'll, I'll go ahead and show you, I'll flip the car around because this is obviously that side, show you what it looks like and kind of give you an idea where I'm going with this. So I flipped it around, still have the scanning dots when I actually do use these tires for my supercar design. So they are big. These are 245, 30, 20. Big tires, a lot of meat. The, uh, what I'm talking about, what we're going with. So this is a Porsche 911 fender. Kind of line that up. It's obviously not perfect, but it gives you some semblance of where I'm talking about. And now there's an opening right here that allows air to come in for the, the uh, actual uh, radiator, which will live in the very, very back. So going with that notion, I need to figure out where four inches is on this so I don't cut off the window too much. I might end up cutting the window a little bit, but not too, too much. So what I'm gonna do is actually kind of get four inches up underneath this fender and let's see what it looks like. So as you can see, by adding that four inches of clearance I need, Hopefully you can see this. That actually is much, much higher than that. Now, it's okay. You know, it's, it's just basically a, a look. 
I don't really like the super, super flat look. I do like more of a rounded look. Um, I still think I can achieve that using this as kind of a guide as a template. Um, but obviously now that with the, and I, I do like the, uh, I do like that cutoff. The original car had this kind of a, basically a, uh, you know, kind of straight across here. So kind of, kind of play with that. You know, it's also kind of interesting, right? Is why I said I needed fenders. I can leave it really high in the back. That might be kind of cool where this is almost just kind of wide open. Anyway. Fun to play with, so let's go ahead and figure out how I can get this a little bit more stable so I can use it for my mock-up process. I still have to kind of deal with the front too. And I need to do both of those things to, so I can actually cut the hoop, so I can actually get this car kind of going in the, in the direction I want. But uh, this to me looks pre eh, pretty good. It's, it's obviously very, very rough, very rudimentary. But maybe, maybe we can make something work here. So let's keep continue on, see where we're at. So I went ahead and cut the fender up. Sorry if you wanted the time lapse on that, but that camera is currently on the fritz. Anyway, what I did was I cut the, uh, basically the lip off and I cut some of the window area out. The, uh, this, this tire is actually larger than what's obviously on a Porsche. And so therefore that lip was kind of getting in the way. But you can kind of see where we're going with this. I like the look of that basically. Hopefully you can see. Kind of better angle here. So that's going to live roughly right about there. So uh, I preserved the original window opening, have a nice roll on the fender, and this still probably has to go up a little bit, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some two-part uh, foam mixed up now and kind of like lay this into the foam so we can really start sculpting the body to the actual line. So let's go ahead and get a two-part foam, get, the, get this thing kind of like actually covered up with tape and everything like that so the, the foam doesn't stick to everything, and we'll go with that. So here you have it, some two-part foam, some uh, house joint compound to kind of get our basic shape. Again, I'm not trying to sculpt this 100% just yet. What I'm trying to do is make sure I do have the angles I want so as I go ahead and start making the roll cage for this that I'm not overlooking something. So I don't want to actually obviously uh, get this completely flat. I don't like that completely flat look. I do want more of a angular look the car itself is pretty bubbly so i didn't want this to just be sticking out it obviously is not going to look factory but i wanted it to look closer to factory than to not to factory or, or closer to a like a aftermarket body kit than just something that was stuck completely on the car so to get this um we do have our tire um this here green piece of what you see is tape is actually a two by four piece of steel a little bit of block just some with some tape on it that lets us know that we have four inches of travel going up before we hit our fender. That's important because uh, I don't want this car to be basically a complete race car. I want it to actually be streetable. So I need a, enough tire travel that's gonna allow for ride comfort. Um, the sidewalls in these is pretty thick too, compared to obviously some modern tires, which are really skinny. But uh, you know, overall we should have some you know, nice ride characteristics basically as we go through this. Um, there is a curve here. It's hard to tell on camera. I'll kind of change the camera around here in a second so you can kind of see the curvature. So the, um, that's obviously going pretty well. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Obviously foam was different thicknesses here and it's really pretty thin right there. Um, but I do want to make this concentric, this opening uh, around the tire, uh, actually completely concentric to the tire. So to do that, I've actually started mocking up something um, basically just to get me in the ballpark. And then as time goes on, like I said, I gotta get this off, get a roll page made, and then we'll really tighten up these, uh, tighten up these corners. This is not gonna be square, by the way. It will have a radius on it. This is just for, uh, again, for trying to figure out if this angle is right. Because ultimately, if I needed to change this angle, the only really way I can do that is what I did is by lifting the body up. And it's a little hard to tell, but in the frame rail down here, you can see I did that. So overall, the back of the car now, and it's also kind of obvious in the camera angle there, is actually lifted up about three, four inches maybe. And that gives us a, a, a rake profile, which is kind of more aggressive anyway, that allows for me to have this transition that makes it so it's not coming straight out. Um, anyway, so how did I get there from here? Pretty straightforward. Uh, what I did was made this little adapter out of some PVC, milled it down so that the uh, collar would actually fit concentrically into the center of the actual, wait a second, into the center of the actual rim. And 
somewhere. I've got a nut. Hold on. So now we've got a good concentric point that's uh, standing out past the tire, so I actually put something on that. And what did I put on it? Put a piece of wood. So our tire diameter, this is uh, again, this is a 345, 30, 20, and tire diameter is 28 inches. So from there I needed 28 inches plus another four inches on top of that. So ended up with this monstrosity here, which uh, obviously left over. And now you can see that that's at our four inch height. Uh, so what I wanted to do is basically carry this wheel arch so it's nice and concentric, like I said, around that tire. So the back is pretty much taken care of. The front, however, it's really still quite a bit short. Uh, I need some more foam. So uh, <laughs> that foam will be here in a couple days and I'll go ahead and be able to get started back on getting this kind of sculpted right. There is gonna be an opening here. That'd be nice, it'll be actually run right into the engine bay. So the um, kind of the next step really is to basically kind of check the front out too. I've kind of started that with a couple pieces of foam block. Actually, let me show you the front will, front will look kind of like this. So a similar process with the front, two four inch blocks. Now we've got some foam on top of here. And what I can see is that this is gonna basically have a nice little arch right up to the hood line here. So that should work out great too. To get that, I actually raised the front uh, off of the rocker. That was raised only two inches. Again, the back was raised something like four inches um, overall. So now we know though where the hoops need to go because this is just a shell. There's literally no structural support. Um, the doors don't even kind of, they're not closing properly right now because the thing is just all over the place. So I'm gonna create the back hoop now that I know where this needs to live and I'll create the dash hoop so they'll, 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 I know where that needs to live and I'll create the main hoops and obviously get the structure on there. The, uh, ultimately the body will actually be mounted, either welded or bonded to the actual chassis here. So it's gonna be kind of a more of a unibody car once it's all said and done, but uh, that's a, for coming up. Um, anyway, the last thing I probably should show you here Kind of see what the angle is that I was seeing and what I was looking for. Let me turn the camera one more time and you'll get a good idea of where we're at with this uh, upper fender here. So hopefully you can see that okay. You can see how this kind of rolls down nicely. Um, obviously very Porsche-ish, Porsche-esque uh, in appearance. And that's okay because obviously this was uh, from a Porsche so uh, you would kind of expect that. But when I originally kind of laid this out, this is what I saw. So this actually looks really good here. Um, the back, which I'll kind of cover here in a second, is still up for debate. I do like the way this opening is starting to work out. Obviously, I had to cut the fender and extend it. This is all going to be filled in with foam, and you'll never even see this fiberglass part. This, again, was just kind of for templating and kind of give me a general idea, considering I'm not putting this in the computer. It will go in the computer, ultimately, because I'm not going to do the same for the other side. Once I get one side done, I'm going to scan it. We'll cut it in foam and, and basically make the other side uh, on the uh, CNC machine. So anyway, so let's go ahead and look at the very, very back and kind of see where we're going with that. So here's the back. She's wide, really wide. <laughs> um, basically, uh, as you can tell, this is, this is, these are some, some really, I don't even think they're over fenders at this part. They're XL over fenders, something. I guess I can come up with my own term. I'm not exactly sure who else is doing something quite this crazy or quite this large. Um, anyway, so you can kind of see the curvature here. It's a little hard to see in the white color, but you can definitely tell it's not, you know, straight across. It does have a nice dip, and that's about uh, almost about uh, an inch, probably from the top down to the bottom there. So it gives that nice roll characteristic, which is what I wanted. I'm not really a big fan of having them stick, com you know, just completely straight out. I wanted to have a more uh, subtle line to it. The car itself is really pretty bubbly, so I wanted the uh, fenders, these whatever these things are, to actually kind of mimic that uh, process where it's kind of round and bubbly. But what, what I did come across is I don't like this light this far in. This is obviously, what is that, about 12 inches, I guess. 
So having the light this far in really kind of screams that this thing is just stuck on here. So what I want to do, or what I did, with Anthony's help, we just created a quick splash and we're going to mount this with some foam or over somewhere right around here. Maybe not right to that edge, but somewhere in the somewhere in that uh, vicinity. And I'll foam that in and kind of work this in and it allows me to move that light from here, you know, closer to the edge of the fender, which I think is going to look a lot better. Um, ultimately, that'll also allow me to carry this line through a little bit better. So it's not quite as just kind of thrown on here. Um, get, considering the front's got that big opening and that looks pretty finished. I wanted to give the back basically the same kind of characteristics where it's looking pretty finished as well. So we'll get this thrown on, but that's not, that's not the, like the main thing I need to do now. Actually, that's a secondary thing, maybe third, fourth, something like that. What I do need to do is get this actually mounted, like I was saying, to the actual chassis. To do that, now that I know that this is gonna work in the front, you can tell the front there that's gonna work. It's basically the same height as the fender. After I've basically shimmed up the body and uh, you know, kind of using these jacks here to hold everything in place, this thing really is the shell. There's a lot, I don't want to push on it too hard. There's a lot of uh, basically the material kind of just rusted away and I cut away the rest of the material. So it's really just a body shell. And what I need to do is get some hoops made. Uh, I'll be doing some chromoly steel, make the nice steel roll cage and get that welded in here. And then the body, like I said, is either going to be bonded or I'll actually weld the body to the actual chassis and uh, kind of go from there. But that's, that's really, Probably a good stopping point, actually, now that I just said that. Uh, we'll go ahead and wait for the next episode to get the body, or actually get the tubes bent up. I need to get my tube bender out and kind of get that kind of dialed back up. It's, uh, it's not really portable, but it needs to be kind of set up. So I get that set up, we'll get some tubes bent, and then we'll get the actual roll cage put in here so we can get the body set, you know, actually accurately and get rid of these jacks and these plumb bobs and levels and everything else uh, to can you continue with the fender designs or continue with the body designs, body mods. So again, that'll probably do a good job for wrapping up this episode. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing and share this video so I can get a little attention. I'd love a little attention. This thing is going to be pretty radical when it's all said and done. So anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day.